Alrighty, good day YouTube, welcome to my channel, my name is Whistle and today we're going to be doing a little video, actually it might be a bit long, um, on how I started witchcraft. So, I am wearing something on my forehead. Yes. Um, that is Moldavite, I've put a piece of Moldavite on my forehead, I've been wearing it for the last, like, started wearing it on my forehead, not yesterday, the day before, slept with it at night, um, yeah, just, I like it. Got a little scar under there. I'm Harry Potter before Harry Potter. Yes, I got that before the film came out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Moldavite on my forehead. So, how I started witchcraft. Um, I, uh, I've literally recorded this already, but I, it won't render. I've tried to render it like three times. So I'm gonna have to do it again on a different camera. Hopefully it works out this time. And I'm basically holding my tripod. So if I'm shaking, it's because I'm holding a heavy tripod and a DSLR. <laughs> um, so I'm not holding like a normal selfie stick, I'm holding like an actual tripod. Um, Alright, so how I started out on witchcraft. So, how I started out wasn't actually through a book. Now I've mentioned this before, that meditation leads can lead to what people call witchcraft or shamanism or all of the different names for witchcraft they have in different cultures. Um, so, meditation was the first thing that led me to witchcraft. Now the reason being, that I've re not recently found out, but have come to found out after practicing and researching witchcraft, is that meditation is a pillar of witchcraft. So meditation leads to astral travel. I mentioned this before. Um, meditation basically leads to astral travel, uh, which is a pillar of witchcraft. So the three pillars are um, astral travel, slash journey work, um, divination, so tarot, scrying and runes, and invocation slash evocation, or if you want to go very deep, possession, which is something that I have never tried yet. Um, so I'll talk about the books that got me into it, um, and the books that I'm like kind of working through, and like kind of what books that you could utilize on like the path that you're on, depending on your path. Because I ha I don't strictly read and perform like left hand or right hand path, I kind of dive into each of them. I am kind of more left hand because I am prefer to empower myself to empower my environment. Um, but again, I do read both and I research both and I practice both. So, um, I'm going to start with the first book that led me towards witchcraft. It's not a witchcraft book, it led me towards it, okay? Um, so I'm going to just extend my tripod thing a bit, so I can hold it out a bit further. Sorry about this. Again, I'm legit using an actual DSLR and a tripod, because my phones are being weird. I've got a spare phone to record on, and my other phone is just being really weird. Alright, um, so my first book I'm going to talk about is this one here. Again, this is not a witchcraft book. This is kind of what led me to witchcraft. So, first book is The Secret History of the World by Jonathan Black. Um, this, again, is not a witchcraft book. It doesn't have anything, no spells, nothing. Nothing like that. Um, but it's talking about how all ancient cultures um, essentially rooted were pagan, pagan roots. Um, it doesn't mention that they were pract like practicing witches. Off the top of my head, it's been a very long time since I've read this. I would say at least two, at least two years since I read this. Um, so I will read the blurb for you, just so you can get an idea of what it's like. Um, again, it's not a witchcraft book. It's just a book that kind of led me to it. Um, so the blurb says, How will the world end? Is the Antichrist coming, or is he already here? He's already here. Um, Jonathan Black considers all these questions and many more in his fascinating new edition which will change the way you see the world. From mystic revelations to esoteric codes, here is the history of the world based on beliefs of the secret societies. So the secret societies that you may or may not have heard about, even the non-secret societies, they're actually cults. They're cults. Cultures. All cultures are cults. Any country is a cult. Um, even like if you've got a group of friends that like you resonate with and you have the same ideologies on a technical and deeper level you're a cult 
Why? Because you resonate with the same ideologies and you're a culture. You follow the same culture. The root word of culture is cult. Um, so yeah, the startling revelations that form the core of this book show the world is deeply strange and mysterious, filled with secrets and codes, with humanity at the heart of the cosmic riddle. Again, if you, even if you're not into witchcraft, I highly recommend this book, just to kind of um, get some insight. Not insight, because obviously, I don't, it's not full truth, um, but there's a lot of truth in it. There's a lot of like occult history, uh, where like certain how certain time periods formed into how they were, like the Roman transition into the Holy Roman Empire, for example, which led to the like the destruction of paganism throughout the whole world. Um, so this is a very good book to kind of dive deep. Really, this is a dive deep book. Um, so that is actually the first book that led me to witchcraft. Um, and then I will go to... Actually, was that the only book? Let me have a look at these ones underneath. Um, yeah, yeah it was. The Alchemist is a good book, it's not, again it's not a witchcraft book at all. Um, Magicians of the Gods goes well with that secret history of the world. Alright, so the book that got me started. Let's see. Here he is. So, the book that got me started, I first got, again, about two years ago, actually. I didn't start practicing until the start of 2020. Um, so, I got this about 2019, end of 2018. Reading it, I didn't actually start practicing until early 2020. Um, it's an English book of magic. This is a very good book um, for basics, in all honesty, and information regarding magic based in England, so like the Celts, Druids, um, and it even talks about like how to plot ley lines and stuff, so I'll explain what it says on the back. Um, so yeah, how to plot a ley line, uh, how to douse for water, Druid tree alphabet, um, casting Anglo-Saxon runes, how to perform a spell with candle magic and alchemy. So again, it is a rather basic book, but it is a good book to kind of get you started to know the fundamentals and to know the history of the area that you're in, um, or the history of your kind of genes. So if you, if you maybe if you're Australian, if you're from the US, this is a good book for you. If you're Caucasian from either of those areas, because you are basically English, okay? If you're a Caucasian American, you're not Native American. If you're Caucasian Australian, you're not Aboriginal Australian. You get what I'm saying? You're actually descendant from English people. So reading about English Book of Magic is very good for anyone that speaks English and is interested in magic. It even talks about um, Churchill being a fraternal druid. I'm not even sure if that's true, like if he was an actual druid, more like a fraternal frat boy druid that called himself a druid. I'm not sure if he was an actual druid because he was a D-bag, a racist dick. Um, anyway, it says here, Magic runs through the veins of English history and the culture from the earliest Arthurian legends to the novels of Tolkien and J.K. Rowling. So Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings is actually based off real real magical concepts. Um, and the Sau Sauron, why do you think he's a big eye? Why is he a big eye? An all-seeing eye, right? <laughs> Um, and J.K. Rowling, um, she takes a lot from Wiccan traditions. Um, Havada Kadabra is rooted from Abracadabra. The Killing Curse is rooted from Abracadabra or Abraxas. Um, wands, broomsticks. A lot of a lot of Harry Potter is based on actual actual magical practices and magical law. Um, so again, this is a this is the book that kind of started me um, and made me dive more deep into magic. Now the next two books aren't necessarily magic books, they are spiritual books. Um, again they're not technically like witchcraft books but they are along the lines of it. 
So those two are first one. Psychic Ability by Anne Colford. So that first book was by Philip Carr Gom and Richard Haygate. That is about price of that sixteen ninety nine. Um, and the, these these first three I actually got from Waterstones, which is an English bookstore. So if you're from like America or somewhere else, you might not have Waterstones, but it's a bookstore. Um, and I got it from there. I was really surprised that they had like books on this topic. Um, I'm going to explain something about the English Book of Magic after I explain these two again because the English Book of Magic led me to get my next books and I'll explain that in a minute. So, Psychic Ability by Anne Colford. This is the only... no it's not because my other books have information on psychic abilities but this is the only book that I have strictly on psychic abilities. Um, yeah, there's like strictly on it. So this is actually, for the size of this, it's actually a pretty good book. For the size of it. It's look at pages, about 145 pages. So it's got, it's not necessarily, like if you know about witchcraft already, it's not necessarily like a path working. But there is a lot of information, um, ways to tap into your psychic abilities. It does talk about... Tarot cards? Or Zeno cards? I think it does mention tarot cards in either that one. No, it's just Zeno cards. Okay. I think I was thinking of a different book. Um, but this started me off with like telepathy. So I started telepathy with animals first before. I didn't actually, I've never, tr I have tried it with humans, um, obviously it depends on them, but I had a recent thing where my, I'm pretty sure my sister read my mind, pretty sure, which I can explain, so basically I came home and I just bought cannabis, um, and I was like shit, I lost, I thought I lost it, and she goes what, you lost your weed? I was like, how the fuck did you know? How did she know that I think I've lost it? Um, but yeah, that, that was strange. That was very recent as well. Um, Alright, next book. Again, not a witchcraft book, but got me along the lines of it, is Akashic Records by Sandra Ann Taylor. This is a pretty good book, actually. It's a very, well, very good book. About that thick. Um, again, this one's $8.99 as well. Same price as the Psychic Ability one. Um, and it essentially tells you what the Akashic Records is, how to access the Akashic Records in multiple different ways. So, accessing the Akashic Records to dive into your past, um, to cut cords, um, to... Ooh, what was... some other stuff. Cut cords, dive into your past... Oh, my, my mind's gone blank. Yeah, like rewriting the records. Um, it actually... Just looking through it now. Your Sacred Temple Meditation. Okay, I haven't read this again in about two years. Um, but now I'm just connecting it to one of the books that I'll get onto in a bit, which is called The Inner Temple of Witchcraft. So, Your Sacred Temple. Ah, this could be a witchcraft book actually. If it's talking about creating a sacred temple meditation, um, yeah, it could be a witchcraft book. I am going to put my tripod down because this is heavy and I was not expecting it to be this heavy. So I'm going to stick it on my table. I'm just going to move this up a bit so I think you can see me when it's standing up. Sorry about this. Oh, oh, crap. All right. I'll probably skip, I'll skip that bit. Alright, so, um, where was I? Yes, this could be potentially a util be utilised as a witchcraft book because I've just noticed that, again I haven't read this in a few years, but it does talk about like creating your inner temple, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit, um, because I'll go on to the next ones that led me and got me started into witchcraft. Now these are rather cheap. 
and not actually that bad, to be honest. Um, Wicker Book of Spells. These are like £4 each on Amazon. Not actually half bad. But they are Wicca. So, Wiccan is a religion. Wicca is a religion. Um, so it is semi... Getting you to do stuff that you don't necessarily need to do. Um, like sealing... Oh, I forgot what it was. Yeah, there's some semi-unnecessary stuff in here. Um, but it can be used, and I have used some of these. I think I've used like one herbal spell um, and two spells out of this. Um, I used a prosperity spell out of this. I'm not sure if it worked because I was building my business at the time. So I don't know if it was just me building my business or me that did a spell when I burnt a dollar basically. It was like, oh, you need to burn some money. So I was like, well, I'm not going to burn a five pound note. I'm not going to burn a ten pound note. And I found a dollar somewhere. So sorry if you hear screaming, cat's probably nibbling on my sister's foot. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are actually, again, they're pretty good. If you're like a bit uh, beginner, and you just wanted like something to practice from, this one. It's actually got some stuff in, like legit stuff that seemingly from, yeah, it works. Like some of them work, not gonna lie. So. Um, th so those three slash four were the ones that I like started out with. Like those were the two years ago where I kind of slowly progressed into actually fully practicing at the start of 2020. Um, so what came after that? Now, the things that came, ah oh, yes, this book mentions a store named Treadwells based in London. Um, so after I read this, I actually checked up the Treadwell store online and I started like trying to find like actual magic books, like what I thought was an actual magic book or a grimoire, even though <laughs> there were two pretty poor purchases um, after the research that I've done regarding one of the books and the other books is handy, but it's not practical. It's handy but practical not practical, slash it can be a little bit practical and handy. Alright, first one that isn't that great is The Key of Solomon the King by Mathers. Um, yeah, for, yeah, Little McGregor Mathers, forward by Joseph H. Peterson. The reason, two reasons, it doesn't have the lesser key, um, it's got a lot of like good images regarding all the sigils and stuff like that, but it doesn't have the lesser key. Um, it doesn't even say all the angel name. It doesn't have all the information. It does not have all the information. So, it's not a great version. Um, again, from my research that I've done, most of the rewritten versions of the Key of Solomon are not that great anyway, because they are kind of Christianized because a lot of it like wants the entities to do their bidding and be controlled by the summoner whereas where you want to be working together not have a slave okay um, so that's the reason why I don't recommend the key of Solomon like many of the versions of the key of Solomon one version that I haven't read that I do from research and like videos I've watched about it um, is one by Orly Stewart. Orly Stewart, she's an uh, author on Become a Living God. Um, and a lot of the Become a Living God, no, on E.A. Coetting's YouTube, they do mention that like you shouldn't be treating like the, the entities that you want to work with as your kind of slaves. Um, so I'm going to assume that in their version of the Goetia Grimoire that they've written, um, the, the way that you pronunciate the words and the way that you articulate summonings are not offensive to the entities, okay? Um, I'm just going to assume that based on what they say in their videos and stuff. Um, again, I haven't read it. I've got one, two books from Become a Living God, um, which I'll get on to later. 
So, yeah, the English Book of Magic led me to getting Key of Solomon and the Dictionary of Ancient Magic Words and Spells. This was a pretty poor purchase. I purchased this because I thought I was an idiot baby witch and I was like, oh cool, I can start saying spell words and making shit happen. But no, that, that's not how it works. <laughs> Lesson learnt. Take my advice. Don't just buy a dictionary and think you can spout magic around. Doesn't work like that. Okay? Um, but this actually can come in handy. So if you didn't, if you had like, I don't know, a, a, a grimoire and you didn't you didn't know what some some of the words are or what they're meant, where they're from, you could go into the magic grimoire and be like, oh, what it does uh, Piran Kakafas mean? And it's to protect your eyes from all ills. These words should be carved on Jasper. Something like that. You could literally just kind of like, oh, what is that? Check the dictionary of ancient magic spells and words and boom. Obviously, I don't think it's got everything in it, but it was just, that was like my second purchase, not my second obviously, those two were like my main witchcraft purchases that were kind of getting me into it and they were pretty shit in all honesty, so I kind of stopped purchasing for a while until I did more research and then that's when I started buying actual legit books that actually had something in it, okay? Um, so after that, wasn't actually, actually no, it was... Ooh, ooh, I'm trying to remember, because I can't remember if I started with the herbs. You know, like, again, this isn't really a grimoire, but it's more like herbalism. Um, this is Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Herbs. This does not have everything in it. I've had to, as you might be able to see right here, I've got like a lot of herbs. Um, and I've had to actually put stuff inside this, because it's not in it. Um, so yeah, it's not got everything. So if you do, if you are into the herbalism and you're, you know, if you're into herbalism, get more books on the subject. Always get more books on the same subject anyway. Just do research. Like you want like at least two books on the same subject if you're diving into it. Um, the next one was these books. This chunk right here. Um, I'll explain first because firstly I read them on a website called Scribdy. Now Scribdy is like an online kind of ebook thing where you can it's like not audible, what's the what's the Amazon one? Where you Kindle, like a Kindle. Um where you can just read it online and stuff. Um so I was read the partially read basically all of these books on Scribdy. And I was like, these are good. Um, and I didn't buy them beforehand because I was like, oh, I don't want to buy it. I have to return it, pay a bit of fee to return it and stuff like that. Um, so I thought I'd check it out before I actually purchase it. And then purchase, don't go purchasing this whole lot in one because it's like 250 quid. <laughs> Lesson learned. Um, so I think it was these two first. So. Slash the inner temple. I can't remember which one came first, um, but it, they were along the same lines, like very similar time frames. So these two: mystical dragon magic and dancing with dragons. These are strictly dragon magic grimoires. So these have got obviously summonings. Um, Alchemy, like herbalism, um, information on like dragon relations to astrology, um, and this one in particular has a path working. The other one, which is the first one, doesn't necessarily have a path working. So what I mean by path working isn't there isn't like a strict a structure to follow. You could quite literally flick into the middle of this book and and do one of them. But on this one, you shouldn't flick to the end and do it because it's, it's initiations. Um, so you've got five inner rings. Um, you start off as an apprentice, enchanter, I think. Apprentice, enchanter, shaman, 
Warrior, and then Mystic, I think. So I've done The Apprentice, I'm on to the Enchanter stuff, but I'm also doing other stuff while I do the Enchanter stuff. Which I'm just overloading, I'm seeing, well, I'm not overloading myself because everything is meant to happen for a reason. So I'm doing them. Um, but I do recommend this one if you're into Dragon Magic as a starter because it has the path working. It has the apprentice to the, sh to the enchanter, to the shaman, to the warrior, to the mystic. So you go through a progressive pathway system. The... where did I put it? Oh. This doesn't. Now there is another Dragon Magic book that I bought in conjunction with this just so I had all of them. This one's cheaper and a lot smaller. So, Dragon Magic, call on the clans to help your practice soar. So this is pretty good, this doesn't, again, it's, there's no structure to it, it's more similar to this one where you could literally just go kaboom and work through something. Preferably you probably shouldn't, but you legit can, because there is no structure to it. Alright, next set of books that got me into witchcraft. This next one is highly recommended. Unless you've been like doing meditation for years. But I still recommend it as like a reference material because it does have a lot of stuff on like what witchcraft is. Uh, the pentagrams, uh, the holographic universe, the hermetic principles, different forms of magic. So you've got like Bruhera, Vudon, uh, shamanism, loads of stuff. It's very informative. It, loads of all of this dude's books. So this dude, Christopher Penzak, um, as you can see, you may not be able to see actually because my camera doesn't like focusing, but those are all lists of exercises. That's a list of exercises. That's another list of exercises. And that's a list of figures. So there's a lot of exercises, a lot of like images, a lot of graphs in all of his books. So I'll show you all of them, um, and I'll show you. I'll tell you which ones that you could s kind of start with because some of them can be used as like standalones if you're interested in a particular subject. So if you're not interested in standalones, these two, uh, the kind of first two. So inner temple and outer temple. Inner temple is all about meditation and tapping into your psychic ability, and the outer temple is all about spells, rituals, and like casting circles, or creating circles. Um, so they're both pretty good. This one, I have, I do, I do like skim throughs, so I will literally go through all the pages once, I'll go through all the pages twice, and then I'll read the bold print, um, and then I'll read like the first line, and I've done that for like nearly all of them, except I think these two. I just got them because I did, like they were going to go out of stock on Amazon so I couldn't be off to wait, I just thought I might as well get them all. Alright, um, so this temple series is a series obviously, so the first one is the inner temple, the second one is the outer temple, third one is the temple of shamanic witchcraft. I'll show you them in a sec, but I just want to read out the the Temple series. Fourth one is the Living Temple of Witchcraft, Volume 1. Let's see if that has... Yeah, The Descent of the Goddess. <clears throat> so this one is... I can't remember which this... If this one is... The... Du, du, du. One of the, yeah, the other one is about um, connecting to the astrological signs. The first one, the Living Temple of Witchcraft Volume 1, is not. I haven't really read both of these, so I couldn't tell you exactly what they've got. I still just have them because I'm going to want to read them in the future, and I'd still use them as reference material when I'm kind of like researching things. Um, second one is the Vo Temple of High Witchcraft Volume 2, which is the Journey of the God. So volume one is the journey of the goddess, descent of the goddess. So descent and so descent and ascent. Sorry, the camera cut out. First one, 
descent. Second one, ascent. So you want to study the god and the goddess, so the light and the dark. Okay? Um, so those two are good books to study the light and the dark. Again, reason why I have them. Um, next one in the series is one that I don't recommend to beginners because it's advanced, to say the least. Um, again, you can tell by the name. It is High Witchcraft, so ceremonial magic based on the Kabbalah. Literally, it's a path working through every single sphere. Not for beginners. I have not even started this yet. Um, I'm going to soon, once I start what I've been meaning to start recently. Um, because I do want to go through the Cliff Off and the Sephiroth. Both. Which is why I'm going to be... I'll explain what I'll be path working in a bit. But the next one on the series, this can be done as a standalone. And if you are interested, if you resonate with the term Starseed, Ascension, Witchcraft, anything like that, this book is your go-to. It's your go-to. Yes. This is the book for anyone trying to ascend. Any Starseeds, anything. This is the book. Um, what do I mean by this is the book? This will tell you how to access your Macabre. This will tell you all about different Ascended Masters. This will tell you all about different star system beings. Um, this will tell you a lot of things. The structure of reality. Uh, Monad, which I've done a video about. Um, loads. Like, loads. The Seven Rays. So if you've heard of the Seven Ray Order, uh, it will tell you about the Seven Rays. It will tell you about crystals. Loads, man. Loads. Let me go to, like, the front. Again, this is, like important book for the new the new age honestly this is the book it even tells you how to do the lesser balancing ritual of the pentagram which is very good um as, as a standalone mentioning the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram is pretty good because the only other way you can you're going to find out about the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram in his other books off the top of my head is the high temple of witchcraft but it breaks it down into like um, the Kabbalistic Cross and the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, even though they're basically one. Because you've got to do the Kabbalistic Cross to do the LBPR. Um, but yeah. So yeah, Finding Your Angels, LBPR, 12 ray alignment. So if you've heard of the 7 ray order, you've got 12 rays. 12, not 7. Um, chakra balancing, past life regression. Macabre Meditation, Ascension Self-Initiation, Shadow Birth, loads. If you resonate with the term Starseed, boom. This is the book. This and another one, because I have like a favourite. Um, it's not even a favourite because of what it's got in it, but it is. Obviously, because of what it's got in it. <laughs> um, but not, not what I mean by like, it's not like a grimoire, it's just like, so, it's got so much information about what's going on. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it when we get there. Um, and Magic of Reiki, if you're interested in Reiki, this is a good book. This and Ascension Magic talk about the 12 chakra system. So again, both of these, this and Ascension Magic is good for the new age, because we will start utilising the 12 and 15 chakra system, instead of just the 7, because... Energy when when people are using energy work like if you if you just don't know about the twelve chakra system, and someone's got like a pain below their belly button, what do you do? You don't realize there's a chakra there, do you? You don't realize you can heal a portal or it's a gateway. I like to call those the middle ones gateways. Um, all right, what came after? So yeah, after I got the Inner Temple, I got the Cabalion. Definitely recommend this. Hardcover. Vegan leather. And it looks good. Good book by the three initiates, so they don't even have a name. They were... Part of the Golden Dawn? I think they were part of the Golden Dawn. Off the top of my head, I think they were part of the Golden Dawn. 
doesn't say straight away. I think they are part of the Golden Dawn. Um, so, the next set of books that got me really, really into it was this one. This for... This one less so, but this is just a really good elemental book. Um, the Elemental Magic Workbook by Sora Villacanes. Um, this is just pretty informative, like, it's got like different elemental systems from different cultures. So, like the Western elemental system, like a Buddhist elemental, so Eastern elemental system. It's got a bunch of different elemental systems. Talks about the deep energies of the elements. Um, so it isn't just like, for example, Elemental Magic by DJ Conway, which is kind of just a spell book regarding the elements. This is good if you want to know about like other kin elements, elementals. Um, but again, it's an elemental workbook and on element. Elementals are spirits, a form of the spirit. So those two were good. Now the next one is my favourite. It is the book if you are against the system we currently live live in. This and Ascension Magic. The, the books. Like the books. This has to be the definitive book on the occult. You're not going to see that. Uh, are you? No, you're not. On par with some of Alistair Crowley's work, and I do not say that lightly. So, the reviews on this are good. My review on it is perfect. It even says if you're against the system, this is the book for you. Um, it talks about the Kabbalic spheres, the Goetia. It does, it's not a spell book, it's not like a, a path working book. It's just more of an information book, like what they are. Um, so, like, it even talks about the seven rays in here as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo, chakra activation sequence. It talks about deeper stuff like Project Jedi, Project Monarch, MK Ultra. It tells you how they they've been utilized. Um, and where was this bit? It even talks about how certain programming goes on. Uh, seen it before. I want to read this bit out to you because it was like alpha, beta and something programming. Um, sorry. Yeah, here. B, so A alpha programming, general programming, B beta programming, the programming of sex slaves for use in prostitution, delta programming, assassination programming, Originally developed for training special agents or elite soldiers. So there's programming going on that is for the general public, for sex slaves, and for like assa oh, sorry, for like assassins. Um, but people don't really know how deep this shit gets until you read a cult. Like you don't, you don't know until you start diving deeper than deep. Like until until you go into the hole and come out of space, you ain't diving deep. Beta programming, psychic programming, bloodliners um, have been determined to exhibit a greater propensity for having psychic abilities. Yeah, they're Project Stargate, Project Jedi, MK Ultra, ritual abuse, satanic ritual abuse. There's loads of stuff, loads of stuff. This is the book. Um, Alright, lastly, I'm going to speak about E.A. Coetting's complete works, quickly. Battery's dying, give me a minute. Alright, sorry about that, change the battery. Um, so before I continue, I'm going to mention da -da -da, tarot and stuff. So I did start doing tarot in forms of divination early 2020, so reading the tarot books are kind of... Because divination is a form of one of the pillars, it is, you're technically reading about witchcraft when you read about tarot. So obviously I use uh, Toph's tarot, Dragon tarot, and the on the Moria Oracle deck. So Crowley's tarot 
Ignore Crowley's tarot. Reading the book will give you some crazy insight into the cards. I just wanted to point that in there. Because the cards have got like really deeper occult meanings than the Rider Waite tarot. I hate the Rider Waite tarot. I fucking hate it. Um, that's just me personally. I don't use it. I've got one. Don't use it. Um, mainly because Judgment has a big English flag and England have fucked the whole world over for the, for our history, so yeah, that's why, that's literally literally the only card I don't like ruins the whole deck for me I live in England, I'm half English so when I say England fucked the world over read about English history and you'll know um, this right here is from the complete work, so this is I keep this up here just to remind me to say it every day. This is the Nuke Bomb Banishing. Um, so that is the Ashtu Malku Tada Akata. Sastu Sex Altamu Patu. That's part of it. I'm not going to read it out because it's someone else's. But if you understood what I said, write it in Google and you can get it for free. Write what I just said in Google, you can get it for free. Um, Alright. This thing is a big boy book. This is obviously the complete work, so this is eight grimoires in one. Um, don't recommend the complete works for beginners. I got this because it was a deal and a half. So each book on its own, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is about 20 quid. So eight times 20, is like what, 140 quid, 160 quid? Hey, 160 quid. This whole thing was 75. So that's less than half price. I got the last copy on Amazon, so I don't know if there's any more left. Um, but the hard cop hardbacks are like three to 500 quid. And the first editions on eBay go for like one to five grand. So this is an investment and a half. Um, now again, it is not a beginner book, but there are some beginner books within this book that you, again you can buy it as a standalone, um, and you can get some of these for pretty cheap in hardback. Now this isn't a hardback one, so I am going to have to look after this like a baby, um, and I do look after like all my non-hardback books like babies. Like I really try not to read in bed or on my lap because it just like f fucks up the bottom a bit, as you can see. Um, so I do try to keep it on a table when I'm reading, but I, I work on my table, it's also my altar, so I, space is, I need my own place. <laughs> um, oh, I need to swap rooms. Alright, um, the two books, the three books, actually, that you could potentially use as starter books from EA Coedding is the first one is Questing After Visions. So Questing After Visions is about making conscious contact, um, examining the nature of spherical and psychedelic visions, um, trying, what does it say here, try ancient methods to make conscious contact with parallel dimensions and their inhabitants. So this is essentially a good way to start because if you can't make the contact through rituals, you're not going to know if the ritual has worked or not. If you can't feel the energy that has come in, you're not going to know if it's worked. If you can't hear, what you're trying to hear, you're not going to know if it's work. If you can't see into like your scrying orb, or if you're using smoke as an apparatus for evocation, it, it, it will work, but you, you're not going to get your message from it, the message that you want, if you don't have the vision or the hearing. Okay? Um, second one is Epismus. This is all about astral travel. So it says here, the true story of apprenticeship and the mystical gurus to learn the hidden practices of adepthood. The author shares his personal diary of experiences with soul travel. I'm pretty sure it was in this book, but I'm pretty sure in the video that he mentioned about this book, he actually got offered an ascended master position and declined it. That's what he says. And honestly, I feel like he's telling the truth. Because of like what he's doing now, like, yeah, refusing an ascended master position, and the reason is to become a master of all. So there are descended masters and ascended masters. Descended masters are obviously in the higher vibrations of the dark spectrum, 
and the ascended masters are in the higher vibrations of the light spectrum. But yeah, those two books are could be beginner books. And one more that could potentially be a beginner book as well, or just something to help you with evocation, which isn't a beginner thing, but it's something that you can learn, and it does have the banishing that's on my bookshelf. So that is Evoking Eternity, that's where I learnt the Ashtu Malku, Tadat Arkada from. Um, and that is literally like a nuke. I said that three times every, I've been saying it three times every day for like the last few days, at least. Um, on the third time I say it, or even on the first time I say the whole thing, it feels like something is gone. The second time it feels like something has gone. And then the third time it's like, poof, the room's clear. It just feels clear. Um, so again, I'm going to say the first line out one more time. You can Google it and get the banishing for free because it's on Google. Google. So the first line is Ashtu Malku Tadat Akata. So Ashtu Malku Tadat Akata. Figure out how to pronounce. Sorry, as I was saying, the card got full. Um, yeah, the Ashtu Malku Ta Dat Arkata is the first line of the banishing that is a, basically a nuke bomb for unwanted energies. It's not negative energies, it's unwanted to you. It's unwanted energies, okay? Um, so that, this, is like a nuke bomb for unwanted energy. So I use that, I've been using it every day um, for like the last few days. And it's just really cleansed any kind of unwanted vibrations around, even though my room is pretty protected. Um, some things do get through through my door because I live with other people. Um, so, last few things I wanted to mention um, was kind of things not to do at the start. So. First things first is don't go at this expecting outcomes. Once you do something, forget about it. Know that you've done it, but don't expect an outcome. Don't want an outcome and don't think that an outcome is going to come at a certain specific time because you said you wanted it to come at a certain specific time. It will just happen if you allow it to happen. Okay? Um, I think that is it. So that is how I started on witchcraft. Um, I am kind of still semi-new, uh, what people consider a baby witch, but that is in this life because I know for a fact that I have done this in the past life before. Um, and I'll explain that since it's the end of the video. Uh, last year sometime I was doing a meditation for my cervical spine, which is the upper neck. Okay, so I was trying to align it, um, and I had a crown chakra activation by attempting to align my cervical spine, okay? What I felt was energy. It was like kundalini electric energy went up here, came to the back of my head, and gave me a crown. It like encircled my head and went straight into my pineal gland. And then... I had a vision of my dragon past life, um, which, since I'm about to show you my um, my uh, past life in Egypt as a sorcerer, I might as well show you the image I drew of my dragon vision. So my dragon life was in Lemuria, and this was where, at the time where there was massive crystal pyramids, or prisms, and like towers, like there was a lot of crystal technology at the time, and these towers were like the size of mountains, okay, so where are we? This, this was, I've shown people this in my video on my dragon past life, past life as a dragon, but that is the vision that I got when I asked myself, have I been a dragon in a past life? I asked this after the, the feeling that I got of the crown chakra. Um, and then I had this vision. The first thing that came to me was the dragon wings flapping, and it came down into this image, and then just kind of 
faded away. Um, but as you can see, there's a mountain oh, no, on the opposite side of my finger. Um, and the pillow is like nearly the same size of it. It's a crystal pillar. Um, so again, that's what I asked when I asked if I was a dragon in a past life. Now, again, what I mentioned about I've done this before, I'm going to show you another thing actually. So I actually have a connection to the Goetia. I didn't think about this before, but I've meditated on the subject, and I used to draw something that's in the Goetia, like a bit of the Goetia. I'll show you the Goetia first, and I'll show you what I used to draw, like, at random, it's like when I randomly got bored, like at old jobs, at like university, when I get bored, I just used to draw a finger. I know that makes, might not make any sense to you, but it'll make sense once I show you the, Go, the, the Goetia, um, after I show you my temple. Now it's not a great image of the temple because I didn't really see much of it, but I've meditated on it and I found out that it is my temple. And I have been an Egyptian sorcerer in the past, so that side. Um, a very big cauldron was in the middle. I was with someone else and there were loads of Egyptian hieroglyphs where I just put like one hieroglyph, but were, this wall was filled with hieroglyphs. That was the entrance. Um, there was light coming in there. Um, but it was uprooted, it was really weird. Um, Egypt in the past was like forested and like there was greenery around. But yeah, big cauldron there, my cauldron. In this dream, that one was me. The ending of the dream was me going to the cauldron and meditating. And then after I meditated in the dream, I woke up here. So what that tells me is I'm meditating in another dimension to project here. Mind blown. Um, what was I going to say? Egyptian thing? Oh yeah, the finger. <laughs> the finger. I'm going to show you this first. Alright, so there are sigils. Oh, there you are. Ah, three of them, perfect. The finger, pointing. Can you see that? I've actually used, drew the same hand as well. I was drawing the same hand. This, this drawing came to me when I was working at NHS one-on-one, -on -one, so this was when I was chubby. Um, geez, like eight years ago now. Something like that. Um, so that was like the first time I drew it on like a notepad, and then I drew it at university on my cover. But I've always, I've always drawn like a little fireball. Every time I've drawn this, I've always drawn like a little fireball going. Pew. But yeah, I have a connection to the Goetia. Past life connection to the Goetia. Very strange. I don't know why I'm always drawing the. Well, I don't. I don't do that anymore. I draw, end up drawing dragons now, um, but I don't know why I always used to draw this finger pointing. It's really, it's really weird, and I have drawn it the opposite way before, and I remember that because I was using this this hand to like, I'm right-handed, so I would copy my hand and like draw it. Um, but that's, that's when I meditated on that, it was like Goetia, Goetia, Goetia. Really weird. But it's not weird anymore because. Obviously, now that I've found out that I've had a past life in some time in ancient Egypt, I don't know, ancient Egypt was a very long time period, by the way. There's not a lot of, like, modern day history on it. Um, but the Sphinx has been dated back to, like, 24,000 years now, or, like, 36,000 years or something. So, yeah, it, it was a very long time ago. The, the, the time period that comes to me whenever I think about the time period, is like around 17,000 years. So I'm not sure if that was when I was there. Oh, I mean, not when I was there, the time period that I am there, because time is an illusion. But yeah, that is it. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall see you next time. Peace out.